This is the last part of our lecture on compile time variability with clone and on. So in the previous parts, we talked about what is compile time variability, what is ad hoc clone and own, and what is clone and own has to do with version control systems and uh, how can version control be used. In this part, in the last part, we would like to uh, get more into the topic of clone and own in terms of build systems. So how can build systems enhance the idea of clone and own, which is applied in practice? So recap, uh, in the last part, we already talked about software configuration management and there are different processes and tools and policies uh, supporting the evolution of software systems. And we talked about version control in more detail. In particular, we looked how managed clone and own can be realized by means of version control. And in this part, we will talk more about system building. I will give a brief recap into system building, and then we will see how build systems, uh, the basic tools uh, for uh, yeah, system building, how they can be used to enhance clone and own. So, the tool support for building systems are called build systems. So what does a build system do? A build system is an automation of the build process by means of build scripts. So the idea is if you have a small Java program, you have just one single class, then it's fairly straightforward to compile this. But if you look at larger systems like operating systems like Linux or other systems, it's way more complicated uh, to compile those things because there are many dependencies, there are many parts for the systems, there are many things that need to be, uh, uh, yeah, that we need to take care of the order, for instance, in which uh, certain build steps happen. So there are multiple steps involved in system building. We have dependencies, we have conditions, uh, we have to copy some of the files, we have to call compilers, we have to start other tools, we have to configure compilers, uh, and there are many tools uh, out there that can do the job, like Make, Ant, or Maven, for instance. So these are tools, and they want to support uh, developers in automating the build process, and typically we have a build script of some kind. So what we see here is a build script for AND. Um, the typical name for such a build script is build XML. Uh, it's an XML file structure, and we can use it to describe what are certain, uh, where do we find certain directories, uh, as we can see here, uh, where is the source code located? Where should the build uh, be compiled to? Where do I find other already compiled classes or jar files that are used? And then we have different uh, targets that we can build. We have uh, we can uh, uh, call and clean, or another system would be make clean, and this would remove all the generated uh, files. We could uh, compile the system. Uh, or we could compile it into a particular jar file. And then we have different other forms, like we could first clean and then build the system uh, into a jar file and things like that. So we have build scripts, and depending on the actual build system, they have different formats, they have uh, different languages uh, to describe what are the necessary steps and what are the different ways in which I can actually build the system. Because if you look at large, large-scale software systems like an operating system, if you've just applied a very tiny or small change, you do not want to compile the whole thing again, but you rather want to have something like an incremental build, and this is also supported by many build systems out there. So how do we want to express variability by means of build systems? And as a small teaser, we will use build systems actually in two different ways. And these two different ways are right now in the literature often mixed with each other. So we will talk uh, again about build systems in the fifth lecture, uh, but then we will use build systems in a very different way as we use them today. Today, the idea is we want to enhance clone and own. So how can we enhance clone and own? What is the basic underlying idea? We still have one variant, um, 
uh, we, we still have a couple of variants and for each of those variants we create a build script. And this build script basically describes which files to include or exclude when translating the software. This can also mean that in particular cases it might be necessary to uh, refine some of the files to other files, overwrite them with uh, variant specific files. So there might be some files which are identical for all of the systems, so we can simply copy those from one variant to another, but there might be variant specific files um, uh, that we see in a minute. So the basic uh, idea, and this uh, was originally uh, this uh, uh, visualization is by Staples and Hill from 2004. So the idea is we have two products visualized here. We have a core product and we have a product for a certain customer. And these systems, so if we look at the, uh, at the core product, uh, everything uh, above this line, then this is something that we see in single system engineering. So you have one build script. The build script uh, tells us uh, how we can build the software. And we have two um, artifacts here. We have two Java classes uh, called A and B. And the build script basically says, take A, take B, compile it in a certain way or in a certain order, and then uh, create let's say a jar file or uh, create the classes into a certain output file folder. And now what happens for other variants is not that we copy the whole thing as we typically do in clone and own, uh, as we have seen in the first part of the lecture, but also in the second part. But in this case, we can copy the uh, variant more selectively. So in this case, we could say for the customer, of course, we create a new build script. So the build script actually defines and describes where to take, uh, from where do we get which files. And from the source code, we might need extensions for our class A, but not for B, meaning that we have this particular error. And this error indicates you can find the class B in this other folder, uh, we can just copy it from the core variant. And in some sense, uh, the class A is overwritten by a variant specific file for this very customer. And even though this picture uh, only describes the situation for two variants or for this core variant and the variant for one customer, if we have three variants, we would have uh, to copy uh, the structure uh, that we see down here, uh, at least to some extent, because another customer might need a class C in addition. We can also add new files, uh, or uh, uh, the other customer uh, don't mi uh, might not need uh, the class A at all. So when it comes to our graph library, maybe this uh, becomes more uh, interesting to look at than with classes A and B. We can see what happens here. So we have our standard graph library, and the graph library has edges and has graphs. And now, when we want to have weighted edges, what we want to do is we want to introduce these weights. So we can see this here in the source code. So what we do is we copy that file, the file that is defined over here, to the file that is defined over here. So the difference to the second part of the lecture or the first part of the lecture is there's no need to copy the whole system, including all of its files, but you just need to copy to clone and own basically on those files where we need changes. So we need, we might not need any changes for graph. So we can still use um, the uh, graph implementation from the previous case, uh, but we might need uh, a new class, an extended version of the class for edges, which also incorporates weights, as we can see from the example. So the question is, is it really that easy? And we will see that it's not that easy because in our graphs, we, we need to, uh, we might also need 
uh, more to apply more changes if the graph also needs to uh, call the new plus edge and needs to take care of creating these new kinds of edges um, and or to uh, state it another way why do we want to copy this We've seen that there's object on the concept like subclassing. Why can't we use subclassing for those? Let's give it a try. What we do is we extend weighted edge extends the class edge, right? So we have these two classes uh, in the first variant and the new class weighted edge in the second variant. Of course, the problem here is if we create the subclass then we also need to make sure that it's actually called in the graph implementation. And if we, we kind of rename this class, because we created a subclass, now it's called weighted edge, we need to make sure that this class is called from the standard graph implementation, such that um, in our picture, that the graph over here is actually using that new weighted edge implementation. And we see in this example that uh, we can reuse and make use of the original implementation. So any change in the original implementation will be automatically applied. And the way how this works uh, is we can use the abstract factory, uh, at least in a slightly changed manner. It's not really an abstract factory, but a factory. Uh, we can use this design pattern to uh, yeah, uh, forward uh, to the initialization uh, of the uh, graph, uh, how weighted edges, how edges are created. So if you want to understand more details here, I would refer you back to the third video for lecture two, where we explained the edge uh, factory in more detail. So now, uh, when we look at clone and own with build systems, uh, we can compare it to clone and own with version control systems. With version control systems, um, or compared to version control systems, we have a more fine-grained combination of the software items, uh, meaning we can even uh, copy uh, and adapt certain files instead of the whole system. Right. So branches in version control allow us to copy the complete system into another branch, develop in parallel, and um, and uh, at some point in time, uh, use cherry pick or merge to propagate changes. But here, um, uh, it's more fine-grained uh, possible uh, uh, changes, uh, extensions are possible because we can copy and adapt or exclude or include certain files individually. And we can even, in principle, uh, use files from different uh, variants. So I could say um, in the uh, original example, we had Eve and Eve wanted to have some uh, code of two other branches so we could even support something like this somehow, at least on the level of files. However, if we look at build systems, they had have limited support for provenance. So actually almost no support. So the only thing that we can see here is where are we taking the files from, but we do not understand when those files have been copied and cloned uh, and uh, where have they been, been cloned. So that's why in practice, even though you would use decide to use build system for clone and own, you would still combine it with version control to understand when which files have been copied from where to where to some extent. In general, um, this is not yet our vision of a software product line because in a software product line, we want to combine features with each other and not files or items, right? So in principle, with software configuration management, we can combine certain items. So in this case, in most cases, it will be just files or folders, um, but this is not necessarily the same as we want for features. And we've already seen this for a graph implementation that uh, we have some features that are uh, inserted somewhere into the code. If I want to have weighted edges, I need to extend edges by some additional methods or by, by some additional statements within certain methods. 
Besides um, that we are not fully uh, in our vision of a software product line, uh, these build systems also have some unde undesired uh, side effects or may have some undesired, uh, undesired side effects. For instance, if we would change the base variant. So assume we make any changes. Uh, for instance, this class is no longer be called A, but it's called C. And we also uh, adapt this class to uh, yeah, reflect this change. Then obviously some variants need updates because we also need to rename the class A over here into C because otherwise it will not no longer work together with the class B over here, right? So these classes will be in conflict otherwise. So some variants are updated, but do not need those changes. Uh, some variants are updated, but incompatible to those changes. So uh, the customer variant over here gets the updated version of B, but it would not need it for A because uh, A is the, has still the old name. And um, uh, it can also be happen that something is updated, uh, but uh, creates incompatibilities. Um, and some variants with copied files are not automatically updated, meaning that if I would apply a change within A, somehow then I need to uh, propagate this change manually to the customer variant over here. So you see, it's not so easy how to evolve those systems over time because we are just copying and adapting files and any change in a file can have unde undesired side effects on other variants. And that's either because it's automatically propagated but not needed. It can be propagated, but then it's incompatible. So there need be further changes uh, need to be made. And uh, we might have some uh, combinations where uh, automatic uh, updates are not applied. So in this part of the lecture, we talked about variability by means of build scripts. And we looked at build scripts in a way, how they can they support clone and own. So the granularity of the clones is not anymore the complete products, but it is now complete files. So this is still not the, the general uh, idea of a software clone. So software clones are typically smaller, uh, 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 yeah, smaller parts, like a certain method is copied somewhere. Uh, so this is still a quite large, um, granularity for a clone, but it's better than uh, cloning complete products in this sense because we can have some automatic updates of other variants, especially for if there are changes to the base code that are needed in all the other variants. Still, we still combine files and not features. Uh, a free combination of features is not feasible. We still have to develop a build script for every clone and in another lecture in lecture five we will go into more detail uh, of other ways how build systems can be used to support compile time variability there's some further reading again and we have a task for you to practice uh, the topics that we talked about about which software configuration management uh, concepts are supported by build systems um, so what are, what are the, the things that we need to do during software uh, configuration management? What can we use these build systems for? What are commonalities and differences of clone and own on the one hand with version control and on the other hand with build systems? What are their strengths and weaknesses? Uh, would you prefer using build systems or version control systems uh, or even a combination of both? Uh, when it comes to clone and own and compile time variability. Well, it was nice to have you here. Uh, again, as in every lecture, we have a couple of questions. Um, so uh, the idea of those questions is not that you can fully answer them uh, completely. Uh, we also have exercises where we go into more details about that. And in the next lecture, we will start talking about approaches that are not considered as ad hoc approaches for variability, but uh, we want to start modeling features and start implementing features. So in lecture four, we will see how to model features, which features are there, what are valid combinations. And we will see build systems again in lecture five when it comes to conditional compilation and other techniques for the implementation 
of features and product lines. See you in a later video and have a look at our practical task again. Bye.